Hey, everybody. How's it going today? Uh, my name is Ricky Redinger. I'm the defensive coordinator and defensive line coach at Loveland High School uh, down here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, as you see here, I got my email um, and my uh, Twitter handle down below here. Feel free to follow me or reach out with any questions or comments you may have. Uh, this, I just joined Loveland staff a couple months ago, so I'm fairly new here, but I wanted to talk today about our, our culture that we're creating with our defensive line. So we took on the, the mantra of the trench cats, you know, kind of a, a, a you know theme from World War II with trench warfare. So that's why we got the, the barbed wire there. Um, but just kind of creating a, a culture within our, our unit and within our defense that our, our kids can embrace. Um, so today we're going to talk about those fundamentals. Uh, just quick background about me. Uh, I coached uh, Shaman Julien, which I graduated from in 2013-2017. Uh, uh, started out as a quality control guy, doing some stats and film, and eventually worked into coaching the defensive line. Uh, went to Mason High School uh, in, here in Cincinnati. Uh, 2018, coached a cornerback. 2019, coached a defensive line. And uh, just recently made the transition over to Loveland High School, where uh, I'm the defensive coordinator and the defensive line coach. This is what we believe in as far as what we call being a trench cat uh, is we want to be fundamentally sound. Um, you know, we want to be disciplined in how we line up, how we, uh, you know, get in our stance, how, how we take off everything we want to do. We want to be very fundamentally and technique oriented to really set us apart. Uh, we want to be selfless. You know, I tell our guys all the time, we as defensive linemen should not be the ones making the tackles. It should be, you know, the linebackers or some of those other guys. We got to be the ones to eat up those blocks and, uh, and not let the guards get, get the free releases to the, the backers that we see so often. So we, we really want to play as a selfless unit, and um, and we don't really want a lot of the shine. We want to do a lot of the dirty work and, and let those guys behind us eat. Um, and we want to play fast, you know, especially the inside guys. Sometimes you get the the stereotypical fat, sloppy kid in there. You know, we, we want everybody to be fast. You know, we, want, we want big guys, but we want to be fast. We want to play fast. We want to play explosive. And we want to be physical, obviously. You know, we want to embrace – eating up blocks, block destruction. We want to embrace contact. We're not going to shy away from it. As you see with our drills, you know, we're all about getting hands-on offensive linemen and uh, and moving them around and, and really winning that trench battle to set the tone. Uh, this, this is what we have, our key points for our stance. We use a lot of buzzwords. Excuse me. Uh, so our feet, I'd say feet under our armpits, um, and we want to split that inside foot with the lineman's crotch. We play a lot of shade technique. We play actually almost all shade technique. Um, so, so we're always talking about inside foot, split in the lineman's crotch, and then staggering that foot back into an explosive position. So the difference, um, you know, I've seen in, in being coached or seeing people teach is I don't necessarily like to tell you where to put that back foot, okay? If you can look at me and say, Coach, I feel like I'm in an explosive position, I'm good with that, right? We've got all different types of uh, body sizes, heights and weights, especially at the high school level. So I'm not going to tell, you know, my six foot four kid to put his foot so far back, you know, because it's going to be a lot different than my 5'11 kid. Um, our hands, we're going to put our shade hand down in the dirt and we're going to have five fingers down. So the difference there is, you know, not, I don't want, you know, your four fingers. I don't want, you know, you lean on thumb. I don't want that palm down. We're going to make five fingers down in a tripod. You'll see it in the next clip a little bit easier, but I call making a tripod with your fingers to really get good base, your leverage there. We talk about weight balance. We want 75% of our weight leaning forward, okay? So really putting that emphasis on understanding, I want you to be leaning forward, ready to take off from the start. And then, uh, you know, that other 25% in your back up in your hips, okay? The gap hand, we're going to have it hand cocked and loaded. So we'd say like, uh, you know, like a gun, have those fingers out, have those hands out cocked and loaded, ready to shoot, ready to fire. We want those elbows tight. We want those elbows right within the framework, right along our rib cage. We don't ever want to, you know, get, get those detached throughout the whole process, and it's going to get us ready to shoot. Um, our back, we want the back flat. We want the hips high. All right, I hate saying hips high because we never, we never want to coach it uh, from how we play. But obviously, uh, as far as our stance, we want the hips above our head. And I say I, I use like to use the analogy of a Viking ship. Um, is what we want our hips to do, right? So we, our hips are high, and then at that point of takeoff, we swing those hips through like the Viking ship, you know, in an amusement park, and uh, and swinging them forward. 
And then finally our head, we want our chin up and we want to key the knee. Okay. So I want to key, you know, if I'm an end key in the tackles knee, if I'm a, um, an inside guy key in the center of the guard's knee, um, the gap knee. And, and we want to key that as far as what it does based on run, read, pass, read, down block, reach block, um, et cetera. So here we go. I've got, uh, Gabe Ogden here who helped help me out with this, you know, with the pandemic, being new to Loveland. I haven't had a great chance to work with my guys here, but Gabe was uh, good enough to get his dad out there and, and help me film. So as you see here with Gabe, we talk about his stance, right? That foot staggered, right? He, he looks, I, I like his hips maybe a, bit, a little bit higher. I think you can get back a little bit more, but he's telling me, you know, coach, I feel explosive here, right? He's in a good bend. I, I'm good with that. Okay. We talk about the hand, okay? Five fingers down, spread out, good weight balance. All right, we see that as we come around there. He's in a good good stance. It's good and staggered. That's going to be powerful um, with that weight balance to be able to get out of his stance. And finally, his fingers and his hand. All right, I'd like the elbow to be in a little bit more, okay? But the hand placement, I like it. It fingers up, they're out, they're ready to shoot. Okay. I don't want it. I don't want it hanging down here. I want it ready to fire out. And then as we said, we talked about the back, the back pretty straight. Like I said, like the hips a little bit higher to really flatten out that arch there, but it's pretty good. And then we'll go here with his eyes. You can see his eyes are up and he's keying that offensive of lineman's knee. Okay. We'll go to the other side. He does the left hand. This is a big thing that I actually make the mistake as a coach sometimes too, but we we're a strength team. So I'll flip my ends based on the strength of uh, the formation. So these guys got to be ready to get in a left hand and a right hand stance. Um, I think it's something as coaches, we get, we get coaching drills. I know I do and, and kind of forget to do the, the left and the right hand switching it up. So um, as you see here, it's pretty, it's pretty identical, you know, and it takes the muscle memory. I know when I first started working with them, he was only used to doing one one side, so he's uh, he's had to kind of learn to work the left hand. He does a pretty good job here, as you see, it's, it's almost identical, and uh, and it's pretty good. And it's, I think his hips here are a little bit better than they were the last time. You see that back's a little bit more flat. I think his chin could probably get up a little bit more, but overall, that's that's about as perfect as he can get. And he's he's an edge rusher for us. And he's, he looks like he's in a good, powerful stance there to explode off the ball. All right. So our start, okay, so we call it start and shock um, is what we want to we wanna deliver and build that philosophy of giving shock, delivering that, that shock to the offensive lineman. So our start, we want to drive that front foot, okay? And, and what I tell my guys is you're bringing your back leg, and you'll see with our drills here in a minute what I'm preaching with that. But we want to bring all that power with our hips. So we showed there the hips high. We talked about the biking ship swinging through. We want the hip to come through, and we want that back leg to come with it. I don't want the back leg to come and the hips come with it. So we create that, that mindset and then fire in our hands, okay? So we've got that one hand ready. It's cocked. It's, it's, it's loaded. It's ready to go. The other hand is staggered, and it's coming up. And, and that's where we deliver that shock when we fire the hands, right? So we, we, what I say with the hands is, you know, shoot the bullet, right? And we come out and we put it right in the V of the neck. And we want to grab the tricep. So, um, you know, if we're Shane, we're grabbing the V of the neck of the offensive lineman and we want to grab his outside tricep, all right? Realistically, we might not always get the tricep. I want to overcompensate. If we can't get the tricep, we're going to work to get underneath the shoulder pad or get to the sleeve of the offensive lineman, okay? From there, we want to bench press him off and we want to shed, all right? Make our, make our run read and by then, we should have a, an idea of what he's given us. But we really want to bring the, the two biggest emphasis on that is being violent with our hands, being aggressive and firing our hands, and bring, being violent with the hips. And those two really bring a lot of that power to deliver that shock to the offensive lineman and get him off his course and then go make a play. So Gabe right here does one of our drills. And for the point of, you know, COVID and everything, this is a drill that, that I'm having my guys do at home by themselves, right? They don't have, they don't have a teammate. They might not have uh, somebody with them. So I say, shoot your hands, right? So you see here, he's working as if he's shooting an offensive lineman, he's buzzing his feet and then he's accelerating. All right. I've been, we, we've been mixing it up where they'll sprint five yards, 10 yards and they're getting conditioning after as well. But as you see here, he fires up, 
He gets that hand extension. He's working as if he's pushing the offensive lineman down, buzzes his feet, and then gets that extension and takes off. So you see he's going to bring it back to us. So once again, he's in a pretty good stance here. He's going to fire. Okay, we'll play that slow motion. He's going to fire. He's going to bring the hips. And then he's going to accelerate through. All right. You see he brings those hips through there. I'd like him to bring the hips through a little bit more, but you understand that that process of being explosive with the hips instead of that back leg, and it's going to give you that more power. I, I see it the opposite way around, and it took these guys a couple weeks we got to work with them before we got shut down. It, they were finally starting to understand why I wanted to thrust with the hips and not the back leg. It was a little bit of a new concept for them, but as you see, they're figuring it out pretty well. This is another one, uh, getting to some drills now. Our single leg start. So this is really putting that emphasis on understanding the hips, okay? And this, this is going to look ugly. If you do this for the first time with your guys, this is going to look ugly. That's going to take a little bit of balance. But it's, it's going to test their hand, their hand placement. It's going to test their hips, and it's going to test that front leg. And this is really going to be a good indicator of if they're in a good stance, okay? So as you see here, I have them pick that back leg up off the ground. So he's still in his stance. He still has his hands down, his hands up in his cock, that foot's down, but he's bringing this foot up, okay? And what he's doing here is we'll play the slow motion. He's swinging that foot through. So he's not stepping down, and, and it's going to put that pressure on his hips to bring the hips through. So he's going to swing that leg through. Once again, get up. I'd like for him to get the chest up a little bit more. But for the point of the drill, it's working the hip explosion. He's getting the press. And then he's accelerating for five yards. We'll bring it back the other way here. Once again, you see good balance here. Once again, like the elbow in a little bit more to about here. But he's got the leg up. He's got good balance, right? It looks like he could stay there in a comfortable position for, for 30, 40 seconds. And when we first start that drill, if you're going to teach that drill, I would recommend that. Have them pick that back leg up and try and get that to balance. Because you're going to figure out real quickly – if their hand placement is good, and if that front foot placement is good. If those two are good, that means that weight distribution is right, and they should be able to stay there for a pretty good amount of time. Okay? So once again, he does a good job of swinging the leg through. You can really see it there, of swinging the leg through and bringing the hips, and then accelerating for five yards. Uh, this is our read and react drill. This is one... Once again, uh, talking about being able to do things at home, uh, this is a good one. All you, you don't need a lot. You just need a, a sibling or somebody else at your house with you. But these are drills that we do a lot. This is our primary drills that we're going to do every day. Um, you know, we're, we're always going to do stance and start, and we're always going to work some form of a read or react drill. So as you see here, Gay's working with his dad. He's working, getting reached, right, and, and fighting that pressure creating that extension and, and flying with it, right? We don't, you know, I say for this drill, we overemphasize, right? We're not necessarily going to fly with the line, and eventually we're going to want to block the struck, but it's really working that extension, pressing off that offensive alignment, working to keep your hips under you and keep an explosive stamp. So Gabe does a pretty good job of that. And we'll do this drill, but we'll shuffle for 10, 20 yards sometimes down the line like that to really work that, work that extension, fight that pressure, and, and he does, once again, to point out, he does a great job with his eyes of getting his eyes up after he presses, fighting it, and then getting the eyes to the backfield to eventually find the running back, just get off the block and make a play. This one here, this is our squeeze and what we call surf. So he obviously gives um, a down block away, the offensive lineman does. So Gabe's reaction to that is obviously getting his hands on. We always want to get hands on linemen, right? We don't, I always tell my guys, you don't ever give a free release to an offensive lineman. So, you know, he probably needs to be shaded in a little bit more there and get hands on the lineman. But you can see he shoots the hands out. The lineman's gone, okay? So he's getting tight to that hip. And what we do is we want to create a big target, okay? So we started this last year when I was at Mason, and it brought a lot of really good success. And I want to bring it with me to Loveland here is we create a target. We call it surfing, okay? So we're going to create a big, wide target for that quarterback to see. And just, you know, we really play in that mental game. And it looks a little tacky on film, but uh, talking to some people, it really, really gives that quarterback just a, a, 
uh, another uh, second guest, you know, seeing a big target, a big wide base. So that's why we want to do it. We don't want to just get down the line. We want to create a big target. Here you see his feet are nice and wide. His hands are wide. His eyes are up. He's making that read. He's, he's kind of forcing the quarterback's hand there a little bit. He slides all the way down there. Gets a good rep. And then our last one's our pass rush. So once again, the you know, you get the, the lineman, we're keying the knee, right? Well, that knee's giving you a, a drop. So we're, we're reacting to the pass. You can see he bites the hands down, gets an edge rush move off there, and gets in the backfield. So just to go back through these three, again, these are these are three that, that my guys are doing um, every day or a couple times a week, I should say, at home right now, where I say find, find a brother, find a sister, uh, find mom, find dad, whoever, and be that offensive lineman and tell them to give you a look. So obviously Gage got a pad, so it helps a little bit, but gives you that reach block and you react and fight that pressure with pressure. Gives you the down block and we squeeze and surf. And then they give you a pass look and gives you a pass rush. And I tell those guys, have them mix it up, you know, give them different patterns and really forcing your hand to read and react to those. Gives us another reach block here. So once again, pretty good job. He gets pretty aggressive, but he does a good job of fighting, staying with it, keeping the hands outside, keeping that outside shoulder free, and being able to get off the block and make the play. And our last drill here that I want to show you guys is our hip explosion. So once again, I say everything comes from our hip. Um, so our hip explosion drill, we start from, from our knees, and we're, we're forcing all hips, okay? So we're, we're putting our toes into the ground, okay? And, and we're, gonna, we're gonna get a good base there, and then I want all their power to come from the hips. So as you see here, he fights through. We'll play that slow motion for you to really understand it. He fights through and he comes up with the hips. Everything's driving with the hips and using that core to explode through. So it's once again, putting an emphasis that I don't want your power coming from your legs. I want that power coming from the core and to the hips. You see he gets good extension there. And the other great thing about this one is being at home, not have a lot. I tell him to get a rep here. So, or to get some reps here. So you'll see here, he's going to go and he's going to get right back up and he's going to do it again. And he's going to get right back up and he's going to do it again. And he's going to get right back up and he's going to do it again. So, you know, you build, build a little bit of uh, cardio there and, and getting some good reps. Now, the other thing about it is our hand fighting, right? So being explosive with the hands. So you see it, it's getting that extension, right? We did this in the gymnasium in the high school along the walls, the, the padded walls along the, behind the basketball hoop, where you're getting that hand extension, you're getting good explosion, and you're falling to your stomach because you're exploding all the way through, right? That you're, now your feet will stop you if you're if you're standing up, but it's helping that emphasis, and then obviously getting the press. Now we will also do this where we'll start when we get outside. We'll do it with the um, with the sled, but we'll also start in a in a four point. Okay, so some people call this a four point. I don't really worry about the speed. I call this two point, and then we call four point. Well, we'll actually start on our hands. We'll start on all fours, and we'll explode from there. So it's just creating another one where that extension's already there. And it's more work in the arm press where your hips are already out and you're working all core and upper body. But I'm big on I'm big on hand fighting and being explosive with our hands. Uh, so building drills around that I think are, are very important to get your defense alignment to be aggressive and we really want to emphasize that shock value. So that, those are the drills that I have. Um, once again, my name is Ricky Redinger, uh, defense coordinator, defense line coach at Loveland High School. Uh, my contact information, so once again, my email is rredinger, R-E-D-I-N-G-E-R, the number four at gmail.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at R underscore Redinger, the number four. Um, and I'm happy to, happy to share any other drills or, or talk about any defensive line play that you may have. Um, I want to thank Coach Banstra for the opportunity to come on here today and talk about
defensive line play and give some of my drills. Uh, good luck to everybody this season.